born a dreamer, Charlie Wiggins began his childhood shining shoes in front of an auto repair shop in the early 1900s. One day he was invited in to help work on cars, and a few years later became a chief mechanic at the start of World War I. Charlie Wiggins then moved to Indiana in 1922 where he opened his own garage and began pursuing his racing dream. Segregated from Indy 500, Charlie Wiggins and other African American drivers began their own racing league, which drew a fan base of 12,000 in their first debut race in 1924. Over his racing career, Charlie Wiggins won three gold glory sweepstake championships. He then used his fame to speak against segregation in the automotive industry. Quickly becoming a KKK target, Charlie Wiggins honorably kept pursuing African American excellence in racing until the year he died in 1972. Homer Roberts was critical to the advancement of African American society by exclusively brokering deals to many first time African American car buyers and built his business from seven used cars to a Ford franchise of 60 cars. Homer Roberts not only became the first African American dealership owner, but led the industry in sales for Reckenbacher, an American automobile manufacturer selling sport coupes, touring cars, and sedans in the 20s. Many don't know the legend of C.R. Patterson, the only known African American founder of an automotive company. C.R. Patterson and Sons Company was founded in 1893 after a partnership with J.P. Lowe in the carriage making business. C.R. Patterson is the epitome of rags to riches, as he was born a slave in a West Virginia plantation in 1833. After escaping to Ohio in 1862, C.R. Patterson began to learn blacksmith trade skills that would then develop into the automotive trade he took upon later in life. C.R. Patterson and Sons were direct competitors to newly established Ford, and without the same funding, C.R. Patterson switched his focus to manufacture trucks, buses, and other utility vehicles. C.R. Patterson and Sons became the go-to brand for buses in Midwestern school districts that had recently converted from horse-drawn carriages in 1920. The C.R. Patterson and Sons Company bus made headway in helping school districts across the country convert from traditional horse-drawn carriages to one of the very first combustion engine vehicles and led the way to the transportation we see in businesses and schools today. Garrett Morgan is a contributor to one of the most important pieces of technology we use in our daily driving to this day. Before Garrett Morgan had a hand in traffic light space, traffic lights used to switch from green to red without warning. It was Garrett Morgan who introduced the yellow traffic signal and ended up becoming one of the biggest deterrents to an auto collision in the early stages of automobiles. Still foreign technology to some, Richard B. Spikes was a highly successful African-American engineer that patented the technology for the first ever turn signals. Additionally, Spikes continued to invent other automotive safety components, such as safety brakes, and even an automatic car washer. George Washington Carver may be familiar to some for his inventions in science and technology, but what many do not know is the significance he had in the early stages of the automotive industry. Longtime friend of Henry T. Ford, Carver worked with Ford to create a rubber substance from goldenrod that would become the main product for tires. His research went on to fuel several other automotive initiatives, and we are thankful for the hand he had in building automotive components for the industry. Wendell Scott served in the segregated army in World War II and came back to open up an auto repair shop. Wendell had inherited his love for automotive from his father, who worked as a driver for wealthy white families. Once Wendell came back from the war, he found himself illegally running moonshine in the back roads of Virginia until he was stopped in 1949. After his stint running whiskey, Wendell Scott started attending local stock car races, where he soon realized his true passion was in racing and began to find his way into the racing scene. Wendell Scott became the first African American to race in NASCAR and finished top 10 in over one fifth of his races. As such was his legendary career that his life was made into the movie Greased Lightning. Wendell Scott was first banned from competing in NASCAR because of the color of his skin. He was persistent, however, and continued to dominate smaller stock car races until eventually he was accepted into NASCAR as the first licensed African-American NASCAR driver.